Did you know that in any typical church, there most likely will be those who go every Sunday and they sit for half an hour or for 40 minutes or sometimes even an hour and they listen to the preacher preaching the word of God. And after the message is done and after the preacher has given the altar call or perhaps the closing prayer or perhaps the closing uh, song, they get up and they leave and you could ask them, so what did you think of the message? And they would agree with it, right? They would agree with it. Yeah, 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 it was great. I, th I think that was a powerful message. I think it was very timely. I think it's very relevant. It certainly spoke to me. You know, they would, they would make those comments and they would leave the building and they would continue on with their Christian life as usual with no change, no application of the word that they had just heard, you know, no, uh, no determination, uh, you know, to uh, no, in no intentional purpose to, to activate that word in their life. How? By, by doing it, by obeying it, by keeping it, by following through with it. It's not enough just to agree. It's not enough just to, uh, you know, I have really enjoyed that sermon, Pastor, and, and maybe you did. Maybe you really did. Maybe it really, you know, uh, spoke to you and it really convicted you. You might have even been sitting there convicted by the Holy Ghost, which are all wonderful things, necessary things. God convicts us by the Holy Ghost, by his word, because he loves us. Because, listen to me, because he wants, to gr he wants us to grow spiritually strong and mature in the word of God. But not just knowing it, not just knowing it you know, quoting this scripture and, and knowing where this passage is and what book and this and that. It goes far beyond that. It's applying that word into your daily life, into your home, into your decision making, you know, into your finances, into your relationships, into your ministry, into every aspect of your daily life. God wants his word to be activated and to be applied in all of those things. And so, you know, you can, you can go to a church service and typically speaking, there's, there's going to be some there that are going to receive the word. They're going to live the word. They're going to act on it. And then there's others who will not be intentional at all. And, and they show up every Sunday. They show up. You know, they, they put their money in the offering. They sing the songs along with everybody else. They come. They enjoy the fellowship time after, you know, all of those things. And yet when it comes right down to it, because this is really what we're talking about when it comes right down to it, right? What are you doing with the word? How is the word changing you? How is the word of God transforming you? How is the word of God bringing freedom into your life from sin, right? From sin, from confusion. Those are very important questions that we ask. And I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. I'm saying that we, first of all, need to ask ourselves. Right? The Bible says, you know, you know, you know, look into yourself, examine yourself to see if you are keeping the faith. And so this is kind of like a personal video, a personal question that I'm posing. What are you doing with the Word of God? How is it changing you? How is it affecting you? And I'm not talking about just the head knowledge, I'm talking about the reality of everyday life, because that's what God's Word, every Every bit of God's word, Old Testament, New Testament, from Genesis to Revelation, every word of scripture is written to apply to our lives for our benefit, for our growth, our understanding, our relationship with Christ, you know, our wisdom in this world, you know, our ethics, morality, uh, you know, holiness, righteousness, you know, the fear of the Lord, all of those things are found in the word of God. But they're only, they're only powerful in your life if you are applying them in your life. The principles of the kingdom. If you're working it out, if you're living it out, the principles of the kingdom that are written in the word of God for our understanding, for our edification, for our equipping, not only in, 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 in knowledge, but in intimacy with Christ. And then living in such a manner that is pleasing unto the Lord by keeping his word. 
And I'm going to just tell you right now, there are many Christians, and, and I'm not saying they're not Christians. I'm saying there are many Christians. And they, as I just, as I just said, they, they can get into a conversation about God's word, about the Bible, and all of those things, and yet they're not living it. Is it any wonder why so many Christians today are living defeated and deceived? Defeated and deceived. They're living a defeated life, and they wonder why they're not getting ahead. They wonder why God's not doing anything in their life. They wonder why everyone else, all their friends, all the people in the church seem to be prospering. They seem to be growing in their faith. They seem to be blessed, right? They seem to be at peace. They seem to have the joy of the Lord, and they're just kind of getting along, struggling, you know, struggling just to keep going. I'm going to tell you really what the reason for that is. I believe the number one reason for that is found in the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 22. Let me read it to you. You probably know it. It's one short verse, but boy, it's packed with truth. And this is what James says. He says, he's writing to Christians. He says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. So in other words, you can hear the word of God, right? Every Sunday, you can hear it today, uh, you know, on YouTube, you can hear it uh, on, on digital, you can hear it through your headphones, you can hear the word of God. It's all there, anytime, wherever, whenever, you can hear the word of God. And that's a wonderful thing to do. I do that all the time. When I go for walks in the morning, I'll put my earbuds in and I'll listen to the word of God. And that word of God that I'm hearing is producing faith in my heart. Hallelujah. It happens all the time because I want to hear the word. I want to hear the truth. I want to hear the freedom that is given to me by the word of God, the spiritual freedom. Hallelujah. And so, but I didn't finish the verse, by the way, because James goes on to say this, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Here it is, deceiving your own selves. So, in other words, if you are hearing the word or reading the word or receiving the word being preached, all of that, you know, you're hearing it, but you're not applying it. You're not living it. You're not doing it. You're not keeping it. James says, you're deceiving your own self. You are deceiving your own self. You can't misinterpret that. You can't try to make that say something that it's not saying. Well, you know, I, God knows, like I struggle to keep the word. God knows I don't really understand. No, don't even go down that road. Don't even go down that road. The Holy Spirit gives you understanding if you ask. The Holy Spirit gives you wisdom if you ask. The word of God, the Holy Spirit gives you faith if you ask. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then we apply the word of God and now our hearing and now our faith is applied. Faith without works. Faith without application is dead. And so we begin by hearing and then we follow through by applying it to our life. James says to be a doer of the word. In other words, we're actually living it. We're actually doing it to the best that we can with God's grace, with God's help, with God's strength, with God's wisdom, with God's understanding, with God's revelation of his word. And now our lives are becoming fruitful. Now our lives are becoming blessed. Now we're, we're, we're experiencing the glory and the, and the presence of God in our life like we never had before. Not just when we go into a church service, but right in our own homes when we're locked away with God one-on-one. -on -one. And we're reading the word. Now it's becoming revelation to our spirit. No longer just a head knowledge. No longer just a, you know, a, a black letters on white paper. Now it's becoming life because that's what the word is. It's life. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. Because now you are applying the word. You're doing it. You're living it out. Let me read you that verse in the Passion Translation, this precious woman, this older woman, one, one day a little while ago, she said, uh, I have a, a gift for you. And she gave me a Bible, a brand new Bible. It's the Passion Translation. And I don't, I don't read it a whole lot. I like to read King James Version or New King James Version. That's my preference. That's what I've 
known for over 40 years serving the Lord, but I do enjoy other paraphrases or other translations as well. But this is what the Passion Bible says, and I love it. Listen to what it says, the same verse, James chapter 122. Don't just listen to the word of truth and not respond to it. Wow, okay. <laughs> Don't just listen to it and not respond to it, for that is the essence of self-deception. That is the essence of self-deception. Exactly as James says, you are deceiving yourself when you hear the word, when you listen to the word, but you're not applying it. As this version says, you're not responding to it. You're not following through with it. You've got to. You've got to. Because if you don't, you're going to continue to be deceived. You don't want to be deceived, especially in this day and age in which we are living, where there is so much deception today in the world and in the church and behind pulpits and on YouTube and in the latest books and in the latest messages and the latest prophetic words. So much deception today. You've got to be able to discern all of that. And the way that you discern is through the word of God. Hallelujah. The word of God, when the Holy Spirit speaks and reveals to you, it is in confirmation and it's in backing to the word of God. Hallelujah. And so as you fulfill the word, as you put it into practice in your life, there's going to be a total turnaround. Hallelujah. All of those fears, all of those doubts, all of those, all the times of the bouts of depression that we go through, that I go through, it all changes when the joy of the Lord comes because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, at God's right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. How do you come into the presence of the Lord? It's by living the word. That's how. Breathing the word, feeding on the word, reading the word, meditating on the word, receiving the word into your spirit, and then letting the word do its work in us and through us. That's how. That's how it transforms your life. You know, I love the book of Psalms. And I read the Psalms, oh, sorry, I do, I read the Psalms often, but I also listen to it. I think I've shared this with you before. I, I listen to Psalm 119 often at night when I'm laying down to sleep. And, uh, you know, it's, a 20, it's about a 20-minute listen. And I'm amazed. I'm amazed at the number of times that the writer of Psalms, which is most likely David, Psalm 119, mentions how often he keeps the word of God, not just hears it, but he keeps the word of God. He does the word of God, as James says, be doers of the word over and over and over. I tried reading them all, I tried, you know, for this video, there were so many, but I want to challenge you either read Psalm 119 or listen to Psalm 119, and you'll be amazed at the number of times that the writer in passion and in intimacy and in love for God and love for his word, Lord, I have kept your word. Lord, I keep your statutes. Lord, I will keep your uh, commandments. On and on and on. He keeps saying that over and over and over again. And that just blesses me. That encourages me in my life to keep the word of God. Well, Pastor Mike, you know, that's the Old Testament. You know, that, that's the way it was back then, you know, in the law. But now we're under grace, and now we don't have to be too concerned about, you know, what you're saying about being so dogmatic and so... Uh, you know, so fanatic about keeping the word, you know, because we already have the word and, and it's keeping us, right? That's kind of the, uh, the, the way the modern church looks at, yeah, the word is keeping us. We don't have to keep the word. It's keeping us. That's just Old Testament. Well, let me surprise you because let me give you a verse from the New Testament, 1 John 3, verse 22. Listen to this. Whatever we ask in prayer, we receive of him, why? Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. We are fulfilling, we are obeying, we are doing, we are keeping, we are responding, we are being intentional to the word of God. It's right there. Read it for yourself. It's right there. Re I'll read it again to you. 1 John chapter 3, 22. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, why? Because we keep his commandments. Just like we read in Psalm 119, we keep the commandments. We don't just hear it. We don't just think about it. 
We don't just ponder it. That's all part of it. But then eventually, and sooner than later, we've got to begin to work it out in our life. We've got to begin to be doers of the word because we are pleasing. We are doing the things that are pleasing to God in his sight. Hallelujah. And so I pray that this video will encourage you, inspire you, challenge you to really not just read this book, but follow its precepts. Get it into your heart, get it into your spirit, get it into your mind. David said, thy law have I kept in my heart. I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. That's one of the big downfalls in a Christian's life is the temptation and to sin. When you were following the word, when you were obeying the word, when you were doing the word, that grip, that power, that enticement of that temptation of sin loses its stronghold over your life. It really does. It really does. The more you fall in love with God, the more you fall in love with his word, the more you obey his word, that's, that, that power of sin loses its grip over you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you from my own experience, you that are watching right now and you are literally bound in chains of, of sin and temptation that you cannot break, that you can't get free from. Get into the word of God. Begin to obey the word of God. Ask God, Father, I, I, I don't want to just know your word. Father, I believe your word. Father, I agree with your word. Father, I want to follow your word. But God, help me. Give me the grace to do it. And as God gives you the grace to do it and to fulfill it and to keep it, I'm telling you that that sin is going to lose its grip and control over your life. Hallelujah. You're going to walk free. You're going to live clean. You're going to walk in obedience, not out of fear or duty, but out of love and out of joy and out of honor to God, the lover of your soul, the lifter of your head, because you are now a doer of the word. You're no longer deceived. You're no longer deceived. Now you have truth. Now you have freedom. Now you have reality of what God desires of us, because whatever Whatever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Father God, I just pray for every viewer right now. Lord, no matter where they are spiritually, God, some are walking in great victory, walking in power and authority, walking as doers of your word, Jesus. And God, then there are others, oh God, that are struggling, that God are bound. They're bound by the lies of the enemy. They're bound by temptation or they're bound by that sin that they can't seem to break and shake. And Lord, I pray for every viewer right now, God, that including myself, God, that we will continue to be doers of your word so that we are not being deceived, but God, that we are walking in the freedom and in the truth that Christ came to give us. Jesus, you said that if we continue in your word, then we are your disciples indeed, and then we shall know the truth and the truth will make us free. Hallelujah. So, Lord, let us continue in your word. Let us continue to fulfill your word. Let us continue to be doers of your word, Father, I pray. God, that we would respond to your word in action, faith with action. God, that's going to bring such blessing, freedom, prosperity, the goodness of God, the greatness of God, the mercy of God, the blessing and the favor of God upon our lives, and that all that we put our hand to will prosper, hallelujah, because we are doing your word, and not just listening or hearing, but Lord, we are fulfilling in Jesus' mighty name, amen, and amen. Praise God. I feel, I feel better already. <laughs> so God bless you, and uh, just continue to walk in the word, hallelujah. Your life is going to be transformed in Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye for now.